The new dispatch application launched with our 5.0 release is a completely redesigned dispatch component that maintains much of the core functionality of dispatch log, but has now been updated with a new layout and a multitude of new features and functionality. The purpose of this orientation video is to get you thinking about how to set up your system and introduce you to some key considerations and notes to be aware of when you first access the application itself. An extremely important consideration regarding the access to dispatch is that all dispatch users must be created within the application itself. And be aware that the first perspective administrator to log into dispatch will become the one and only initial dispatch user. No one else will be able to log in until this person starts creating other users, something that we'll see coming up in a little bit. Once in dispatch, click on the settings button from the main toolbar to access the settings and administration area of the application. Most of the settings that will be seen here will be discussed in more detail in the dispatch administration video. For now, we'll focus on creating additional dispatch users and the setup of your zones and teams and dispatch locations. Let's start with the zones and teams. The first time the application is accessed, you will see that this area has an existing operational zone named main zone. This is just a default value, which is designed to either be renamed or deleted after you've created your own operational zone. So what are operational zones? This is a larger area or areas where your company operates and responds to events. All dispatch systems must have at least one operational zone. However many more you wish to create will depend on how your company operates. Examples could be larger geographical regions if you have multiple dispatch centers. On a smaller scale, these could be different areas or buildings throughout a state or province, a city or a large campus. Or smaller yet could be just a single building. Operational zones allow you to introduce segregation to your dispatchers. If you have two or three operational zones, you could allow your dispatchers access to just one or all of them as needed. But within the application, they can only view the dispatches and officers for a single operational zone at a time. So this allows you to separate responsibility amongst users by having one dispatcher or group of dispatchers that would be responsible for one zone while others are responsible for another zone, and so on. Within each operational zone are work zones. And again, you must have at least one, but you could add as many as you need. These smaller areas within the operational zone are also identified on your dispatches to indicate where the event is occurring. Not the actual physical location, but a general area where the physical location would exist. This is also how you can segregate duties amongst your officers as well. Examples of work zones could include the separate buildings on a campus or different areas or floors within a large building complex. A key consideration here will be the teams that we're going to create next. Teams will be assigned access to one or more of these work zones. And if a team does not have access to a work zone, then officers of that team cannot respond to events that would occur there. A couple of reasons you may want or need multiple work zones could be if there's a large physical space between the work zones, which would make it impossible for an officer to respond to events in more than just one. Or maybe you just want one group of officers only to respond to events in a certain zone, while another group is responsible for events in a different zone. Another consideration here is that you will have to link the work zones to your existing perspective work groups but this is only for the determination of the record or workgroup visibility once the dispatch is closed and transferred to the activity data forms within Perspective. The last step here is to create those teams we mentioned. Teams are your groups of officers. These could be actual teams, shifts, or whatever you deem appropriate. And this is something that must be identified whenever you bring an officer on duty. Again, you can have one or multiple teams as needed. Once you have added your team's name, to the right, check the box beside the work zone or zones that this team will have access to. Remembering that officers of this team would only be able to respond to dispatches in the zone or zones that you identify here. Now let's look at users. As mentioned earlier, there will be no users that can access this application until they are created within dispatch. If you aren't ready yet to fully configure the dispatch application, that's okay but it will be a benefit for you to configure your own settings here for the accessible operational zone and the defaults, because after this, you will not be able to edit these settings yourself. Edits can only be made to dispatch users that are not currently logged into the application or on duty. Because of this, it may be helpful to create at least one other user who will also be a dispatch administrator that could log into the application to either assist 
or be backup in configuring this application. Before you can create any new users, please note that all dispatch users, which will include dispatch administrators, reviewers, dispatchers, and officers, they must also have a prospective user account prior to creating them here. To create a new user, click the Create button, and then in the User Select field, type the person's name or their prospective username. Once found, click on them to select. Within this application, once all required fields have data entered on them, the record is automatically saved. So once the user select is identified, the user is actually created. And at this point, they could then log in to dispatch using their prospective username and password. Below, in the user access area, checking the administrator box will grant the user full access to dispatch and all of the settings we see here. This makes the user a dispatch administrator. The reviewer box grants read-only access to the application. These users would have no access to create or manage dispatches or any administrative functions. Leaving both boxes unchecked is basically indicating this user would be a dispatcher. They would have access to the full functionality of the application, except for the settings area. Here, they would only have access to the user settings, notifications, and about areas. In the accessible operational zones, check the box beside the zone or zones that this user will need access to. In the defaults, this allows you to default the operational zone. This would be the initial operational zone that would be displayed when the user logs in. The work zone default will default that value for a dispatcher, and the call sign and team defaults will default values for your officers, so that you don't have to select or update them when bringing them on duty. Our last topic for this initial orientation is to look at dispatch locations. During the creation of a dispatch, dispatchers can indicate where the event is occurring by selecting the location from any pre-created dispatch locations and possibly indoor locations and or your site rollup values. Ideally, you will want them to select from the pre-created locations or indoor locations as much as possible. This is because dispatch locations are different from the prospective site rollup that you're used to using. These could be named the same, but without the proper setup, they can be very different. Dispatch locations must be created from a unique latitude and longitude. This is not a requirement for prospective site values, although you can, and as of now, should indicate these coordinates in the lookups. Let's look at how to create a dispatch location and point out where there are similarities and differences with our site rollup. New locations can be created by zooming in on the map and right-clicking to pin the location, which will pull the latitude and longitude or you can manually enter this lat and long into the appropriate fields. A reverse lookup service may automatically pull the address details, but whether this occurs or not, just note that you can manually update the address if needed. Next, you can link this dispatch location to your prospective site rollup values. Although this is not required, it is strongly recommended that you do this to ensure consistency in your reporting. The pre-built prospective reports use the site rollup values to show you where events are occurring. Analysis Expert can also do this, as well as pull more details like the latitude and longitude that we're talking about here. Most users don't want to go into this much detail since it's easier to recognize a site by name rather than by its latitude and longitude. Now, when we close a dispatch, the record is transferred to the activity data forms within Perspective. But if the location is not linked to a Perspective site value, then on the activity record, the four level site fields will be blank. This could skew your activity or incident reporting unless you manually go into these records and update the site value. What will pull into the activity no matter what will be the name and the latitude and longitude information. This would appear in the description field of the activity for all records, whether linked to a prospective site value or not. If the location is linked to a prospective site rollup value, then when the dispatch is closed and transferred to prospective, then the selected site rollup values will populate these fields. Making sure these locations are linked to prospective site values means less work in the long run for updating your records and ensuring consistency in your reporting. Going a step further with locations, within a dispatch location, you can also add indoor locations. If the dispatch location is, say, a building, then the indoor locations could be the different floors, rooms, or areas within the building. These may also exist in your prospective site rollups in the lower levels of the list. As these indoor locations are being created, they can and should be linked to your prospective site rollup values as well, since we can see we can link all the way down to the fourth level of our site rollup. The other key functionality of these indoor locations is that they include images, which could be pictures of a location or even a floor plan of the location. 
The advantage with this will be recognized with the use of the Officer Mobile application. With that app, your officers will be able to see the indoor location image for the dispatches that they're responding to and can better see where they need to go. Now, if you remember back a few minutes ago, I said ideally your dispatchers would select from these dispatch locations or indoor locations when they're creating their dispatches, but they still could search for and select from your site rollup values as well. The consideration with this scenario though is do the site rollup values already have a latitude and longitude saved on them within the lookup list and prospective administration? If not, your dispatchers could still select one of these values for the dispatch location. And in the process, the system will create the dispatch location for you. But this location would have a latitude and longitude of zero and zero. And it will not automatically link the dispatch location to the site rollup. The consequence of this is now you have a location that, at least on the map, would show off the west coast of Africa. And again, when the dispatch is closed, the four level site rollup fields would be blank on the activities wherever this location is being selected. Now, let's say you were actually okay with this, or at least the map part of it. A dispatcher wouldn't actually be able to select another site rollup value using this same method again. The location would fail. This is because the site rollup values that do not have a latitude and longitude will have coordinates of 0 and 0. And, as I already mentioned, each dispatch location must have a unique latitude and longitude. And as we just talked about creating a moment ago, you would now already have a location that uses a latitude and longitude of 0 and 0 so it won't let you use that again. So, this might sound a little daunting, but this could actually be a benefit. If you take the time now and ensure your prospective site rollup values all have a unique latitude and longitude, and should a dispatcher select one of those site values, then now, not only will the dispatch locations be created with the unique latitude and longitude, but in this case, the system will link that location and the prospective site rollup for you. You would probably still need to edit the location at some point for other details, images, and possibly indoor locations, but at least the general location itself is created and consistent with the rest of your prospective reporting. As mentioned, there is more to the setup and configuration of the dispatch application, but this is just a good starting point of things to consider. Additional documentation and videos on the dispatch application are available from our customer portal for more information.